hosting. Today I'm going to show you why UbiDots is changing the way companies and developers are capturing data and making the most of it. So you can think of us as a tool you for the internet of things. So what I'm going to show you today is a live demo. And just like Twilio disrupted phone application market by empowering people to do phone app, phone powered apps, or Stripe did it for payments, we want to empower people to build sensor powered applications. So, in a nutshell, uh, UBDOTS uh, is a platform to collect data from, from different devices and then make this data useful uh, to work to dashboards and other self tools we're just going to see. So, we believe that. The, like, the past decade was like the decade of the web applications. You know, you've got a lot of stats coming out around web, Dropbox, you can name a lot. And because we're living right now in like, this explosion of sensor devices, uh, there's going to be a lot of data that's going to be generated about these devices around us. And we think like the people building apps around that data will be the next uh, big things. So we, we sort of want to empower those people. Uh, so, why not make an example of somebody who would actually do that? So, this is our quick start right now. Um, so, let's make like a real simple application first. So, let's say this is a head of a manufacturing company. Um, he wants to measure the water level in a tank, right? So he's got a sensor involved, maybe the industrial level. So we're going to make as if my cell phone was the actual valve that controls the water flow. I'm just going to quick scan it. So what you see here is my uh, cell phone is actually uh, acting as a valve. And then this data is going live to the cloud and then updated in real time to web. So if I twist my phone, uh, you'll see that it's, it's like open. You, know, you see it, it's closed. So it's the internet, so it's, it's <laughs> And then it's open. So this is just like a way to showcase that what real time means for us. And it's actually what an actual sensor in the physical world will be sending data, like at this place. So let's make, uh, like it's called the father. Uh, what if he wanted to know, uh, like if the temperature, if the level raises a certain threshold. So I'm just going to type a number. Uh, there you go. So let's open it again. And then when it's about a certain level, then I should get uh, an SMS saying, like, what happened? So let's wait a little bit. There. So if any time I should get an SMS mail. Okay, there you go. So it says, like, hey, you water time is cool. So let's see what happened in the back end. So what actually happened is I was sending like uh, the accelerometer in my cell phone. I was like mimicking this uh, up, open, and close. And then you can see like the actual data that was generating. Uh, this is like the dashboard. Oh, those are tweets, but uh, this is not the, the actual dashboard. So this is what was being generated uh, like in real time. Uh, this is. The, the text message that was, that was sent. So this was actually created in backend, but the user could just do it itself. So now, how does it look like in the real world? Uh, I was building an app last night uh, just to show how easy it was. So I bought, I bought a device for the Raspberry Pi, and this device uh, has been tracking the movement in our in this place uh, and sending it in real time to Ubisoft. And the fun part about it is that it's, it didn't cost about more than 50 bucks to pull together. Uh, it's it's the, the case of a pair of glasses, so it's not too expensive. And it has like a, a motion sensor inside. So 
uh, I, I didn't have to solder anything. I bought everything in the retail store at Microsoft. Uh, so what's happening right now is that it, it's sending the movement as if it were a people counter. Now people counters are used a lot in retail stores, for example, to, to see how many people is walking in front of it, how many people is entering. And this is how this data looks like. So you can see like all the spikes, that's where people were coming in and out. Uh, this is the lady that left like 30 minutes ago. And then that's me playing with, with it right now. So uh, in a nutshell, that's you with us. Uh, we, are, uh, we have been building these kind of complications for two years in Colombia. Uh, we've worked with retail stores, we've worked with uh, a lot of hospitals that monitor the temperature in real life, in real time. Uh, we work with oil and gas companies that send out like thousands of different uh, industrial variables around like all machines. And we want to get this up out so that we can uh, empower more people to do these kind of things. Why that is? Uh, we're, as I said at the beginning, we're living in a sensor explosion. explosion. We see every time we're kickstarting projects around uh, hardware itself, uh, hardware enthusiasts, the prices are going, are going down. Uh, these devices are even made for kids and we see like a lot of tools around uh, this device application movement uh, and we want to be uh, like another tool for people to uh, build these really cool applications. So we're looking for partners, we're looking for beta testers and uh, we'll be here in Boston for a couple of months more so we happy to talk to you after the demo. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have an uh, open API, so it's a REST API. Uh, we will, in theory, it accepts any kind of HTTP traffic. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're writing libraries for uh, each particular device and tutorials for each device. So, like, you should just be able. Like, our goal is to save you as many lines of code as possible so that in a few lines of code you just whatever data you see in your hardware you should be able to see it in the cloud. What's the policy of polling rate to support your device? And how can we Okay, uh, so we have tested uh, for example this uh, own application it, it sends you real, so real fast uh, latency is around 50 milliseconds, so above that, like, like sample rate above that should be fine. How many devices can one have connected at one? Sir? Is there a limit how many devices can work with at one time and one to one? Well, you, the way it works is you create uh, different variables. So let's say you create temperature, you create uh, like humidity and like different things and you, those are independent so you just send data straight to it. We will be supporting more kinds of data so not, not just uh, numbers but also strings and all the things that make sense for our beta testers uh, that they have, they have these, these kind of things and one of them is like sending a lot of data in just one, so one post uh, so yeah it makes a lot of sense. Sorry. Okay, that goes back exactly to this question because um, that's exactly what happened to some testers. So, they, for example, when you have a GPRS connection, it goes off. So, uh, what you would do is you lock your data locally, and then once you have the internet connection again, uh, you can like upload massively all the data that was missed uh, during the, the time of this. Um, I was wondering if, is, can you program a logic on the device itself? If you had the sent the text message, could you have to turn the valve off? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we try to do the device coding so as down as possible, to say that way, so that you have to code the less and then do the rest in the cloud. So, a, a possibility for it would be 
coding here itself to, to, to tell it to send an, an SMS if something happens. But that's not the point. So the point is that we do it in UV dots. So for example, uh, let's say you have a tank here, and you would choose like the water level. So let's say if it's greater than uh, 80%, uh, you would be able to... So you, right now we just we only support uh, two actions in our beta. Uh, what we want to do here is wanna, we want to do like give more possibilities to match up things. So if you have, I don't know if you guys know electric imp or like other types of devices that are out there, you can just put uh, an HTTP request here that you want to want to be run, and that request could be turning a bulb on, a light on. So without coding, you can just you know create a home automation project if you wish, or a lot of people are approaching us uh, willing to prototype projects. So you can think of like a phone gap for Internet of Things because it, it's really hard to pro it's really uh, fast to prototype things. So yeah, let's say you have a home automation style in mind, you can build prototypes in the amount of days and then show show off in front of your investors for example. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Join Boston New Technology Meetup, sponsor an event or a venue, present your idea, and attend to network with Boston's brightest. Details are at www.bostonnewtech.org and in the video description.